And good morning, fourth grade students of Mr. Leggett's class. Please take out your homework from last night. Make sure your name is on it and yesterday's date or today's date even will be fine. We're just going to do a quick review of some of the problems, not all. Uh, around 847, one to the nearest. Thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. Let's do thousand first. That's the five. We can look right here and see that there's a zero right behind the five. We know that one must be less than the midway point, which would be 500. So when we would round to the nearest thousand, these would stay the same, the eight, four. Will the five stay the same? Yes, because this oh, oh, or this one is less than 500. So the five would not change. Let's go to 10,000. We have a four in the 10,000 place. Then we have a five. Remember what happens to this number? If the number next to it is a five, Think about it at the midpoint, too. It's 5,001, which is greater than just 5,000. So it would go, um, excuse me, Mr. Leggett. It would go to the nearest brain freeze. It would go up to the nearest 10,000. So the four would go up to a five. So it would be 850. Thousand. Sorry about that, just kind of lost it for a second. All right, let's continue on with 100,000. We have eight and we have a four behind it, 45,000. That's not 50,000. It would have to be greater than 50,000 to make the eight go up to a nine. So it is just 800,000, okay? Let's go to just A, 783 rounded to the nearest hundred. Okay, rounded to the nearest hundred, there's my 783. Is 783 closer to 700 or 800? Well, think about it. It's 83 away from 700, but only 17 up to 800. Plus, it's greater than the midpoint of 50. So we would round up to 800, okay? Let's do B, round it to the nearest 100. There's my 100 spot. 12,000, we know that 12 is gonna stay the same, the 12,000. But will this seven become an eight or remain a seven? Well, 781 is close to 800 much closer than just 700, and that 81 is beyond the midpoint. So we're going to round up to 12,800. Okay, those are all the ones we're doing on that side. Let's flip it over really quickly. And we're going to use, uh, so we're going to solve the following problem using pictures, numbers, or words, words. And it says, in the 2011 New York City Marathon, 29,867 men finished the race, and 16,900 women finished the race. That's what we know, and I'm going to circle this and this number. Each finisher was given a t-shirt, something else we know. About how many men's shirts were given away? About how many women's shoots were, shirts were given away? Explain how you found your answer. Well, let's use the old vertical number line for the men. 29,867. So let's round to the nearest, oh, we could round to the nearest hundred, we could round to the nearest thousand. Let's do to the nearest, oh, we can keep it real and go to the nearest hundred, okay? Um, so let's do 29,800, and the top notch would be 29,900. What would our middle point be? It'd be 29,850. Okay, so this is 29,867. We do 29,867. And what would we round? We'd round up to 29,900. Now we also could have rounded up to the nearest thousand and that would have been what? It would have been 30,000. For the women's, let's go ahead and do the nearest thousand, okay? 16,928, we'll put 16,000 here, and we'll put 17,000 up here, and then in between would be 16,000 what? 16,500. So 16,928, that's certainly greater than 16,500, so let's put it way up here, it's almost 17,000. So that's an easy, um, an easy um, 
around up to 17,000. So we have 17,000 here, 29,900 29, there. Now it says to explain how you to find your answers. Well, we used a vertical number line to find our answers. And we also could have written that we went up to, uh, we used thousands here and hundreds there. All right, go ahead and take your, pause this video and then take your um, homework and put it in the blue bin and then get out your mid-module assessment task, module one. First thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have your name on it and today's date. There's my name. Let's do today's date. Tomorrow will be the 5th. I'm making this on Thursday. Excuse me, the 6th. So we have September 6, 2019. Let's turn the page. We do not need to put our name on this page because we have our name on the front cover, okay? So let's really review each question before you start the test. Don't rush ahead of me. I've seen students rush ahead of me, not annotate the, the questions, and they usually don't do too well on the test. Eureka math, you really have to understand and annotate. So let's start with this. Arrange the following numbers in order from least to greatest. That means you don't just write one, two, three, four, and so on and so on. You're gonna write a number here, comma, here, comma, here, comma, here and circle least to greatest, okay? Okay, our next one is use the words 10 times to tell how you order the two smallest numbers using words, pictures, or numbers, okay? 10 times, all right? So, the two smaller numbers. Let's set up a chart. A place value chart. And we're going to have the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and I'm going to extend this out for the ten thousands, okay? So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using the number line to put a number and show how it was multiplied 10 times greater. One of these numbers up here is 10 times greater than the other one, okay? So we could say blank, not the number line, the place value chart, is 10 times blank. So it comes after blank when going from least to greatest, okay? And I'm going to even give you a hint and put a four here and an arrow that goes that. You need to fill out all the rest, okay? Let's go to number two. It says compare using greater than, less than, or equal. Write your answer inside the circle. They're giving it in unit form here. What does 100 thousands look like? There's 100,000, right? 100,000. So you're going to have to use your knowledge of unit form as well as um, kind of expanded form there to figure out which one's greater. You need to put the number down here, like I did up here, to really get this right, OK? Let's turn the page. Okay, the football stadium at Louisiana State University, LSU, has a seating capacity of 92,542. That means 92,542 people can sit in that uh, stadium. So down here, according to the 2010 census, the population of San Jose, California, was approximately 10 times the amount of people that LSU Stadium can sit. So there's my 10 times. What was the population of San Jose in 2010? So we're going to make a chart, place value chart. Okay. 
with six bases. We have the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and hundred thousands, okay? That's what that looks like. So make your place value chart. And you're going to put Louisiana's number, the number of people in the stadium, you're going to go like this. You're going to go, there's nine ten thousands, two thousands, five hundreds, four tens, and two ones. But how are you going to show ten times? You're going to sweep that way or go that way. Then you're going to say the population of San Jose, California is blank after you figure that out. And once again, you can always pause this if I'm going too fast, all right? <clears throat> now it says, write the seating capacity of the LSU Stadium in words and in expanded form. Remember, they're talking about the LSU Stadium, not San Jose. So I'm going to start off with the expanded form, and I'm going to say 90 thousand plus. You've got to finish the rest. I'm going to help you on the word form too. 90 two thousand and you finish the rest. Okay, our next one. It says, draw two separate number lines to round the LSA, LSU Stadium seating capacity to the nearest 10,000 and the nearest 1,000, all right? So it's two different number lines, vertical number lines. Once again, you can always pause this if I'm going too fast. We're going to put 10,000s here and thousands here. So I'm going to help you set up the 10,000 ones. Their stadium is 92,542. So on my bottom end point, I'm going to put 92,000. At my top end point, I'm going to put 90... Uh, I'm sorry, nearest thousands. I'm going to put 90,000 on the bottom and 100,000 on the top. And my midpoint would be 95,000. Your job is to put their population, I'm not the population, the capacity of the stadium on the number line and circle either 90,000 or 100,000. The thousands place. I'm going to put my end points and my midpoint and my bottom one I'm going to put 92,000. Because remember, my capacity is 92,542. You finish off the rest of that one. Okay, now you're going to have to go back to the problem you just finished, and it says compare the stadium seating rounded to the nearest 10,000 and the seating rounded to the nearest 100 using greater than, less than, or equal. So we're comparing the 10,000 and the 1,000 that we did on the previous page. Okay? So we're going to have a number greater than, less than, or equal to, and another number. Now, it's going to say, our next one, our final question is, which estimate, estimate rounding to the nearest 10,000 or nearest 1,000 is more accurate? Use words and numbers to explain. Okay, we're going to do a little fill in the blank. Rounding to the nearest blank is more accurate because the actual number blank, put a couple commas there, is closer to blank than blank. Now we're going to do a word box to fill these in. 
Here's what you're going to use to fill in. 92,542, thousands, 90,000, and 93,000. So let's leave that up there for a little bit. We'll zoom out a bit. So you could always pause this. When you've finished all these notes, you may start the test. Please don't start the test without finishing the notes. You will not do nearly as well. Thank you very much, fourth grade students. Do a great job.